today we'll be taking you guys along with us on a Korean food tour. If you come here, come here for that. That is delicious. You know this is the good stuff. And this street, you guys, is known for awesome Korean food. What's going on, Foodie Ohana? Welcome back to the channel. On today's episode, we're taking you guys along with us on a Korean food tour here on Keamoku. It is ever changing with the new condominiums, but not to worry. There are still awesome Korean grinds here to check out, so we're taking you along with us. In the area of Keamoku, known for their awesome Korean food, our first stop today is an amazing Korean homestyle restaurant that a lot of locals love. We are here at Ire in the new Azure condominium. This spot in particular was one of the first tenants here in Azure to move from the old Korea Moku, as they would call it. But they used to be up the street where the new condominium called the park is being built. In the recent past, they actually kind of knocked down the whole area and a lot of vendors had to relocate. So they actually relocated here. They used to have a shop more up the street and in Makali Shopping Center. We came hungry for Korean food. And not just any Korean food. This is authentic homestyle Korean food, guys. And the first sign of authenticity, you see a lot of the Korean aunties already coming in to start their day right. And sign number two. Boricha, which is kind of like a barley tea. If you had any like Korean friends growing up, they mm -hmm. always drink this instead of water in their house. Well, the friends that I had at least. And another very authentic Korean thing is the jug of water. So let's start off the day right with a nice sip of boricha. Cheers. Mm -hmm. oh. Thank you. Oh, oh thank you. Wow, that looks Come good. Come show me the... <laughs> so authentic, you got me speaking Korean. Wow, Furi Ohana, look at the spread that we have here today. And even more is coming as we speak. Thank <laughs> oh, you. Thank you so much, Nick. Thank oh, you. Thank you. So E-Ray is a family style Korean restaurant. Come with your family or a bunch of friends, order several dishes and share it. Guys, look at this amazing spread that we have here. We got a lot of their favorites, their personal Nick's favorites, and also the customer's favorites. Of course, Felix had to get his kawi. I had to get my topoki with cheese, of course. Signature dishes Signature. known to Ire as well. Did we even say we're here at Ire? Well, if we hadn't, we're here at Ire restaurant. Been in the biz for over 20 years. Kept in the family, moved a couple places, but now they're here. First and foremost, let's try the banchan. Here, they do it very simply. Only two banchans. It's not the usual spread. There's kimchi and pickled onions. Two of our favorites, of course. And the reason for only having two banchan, as Nick mentioned, is because they put their energy into ensuring you get a bigger portion size for the entrees. Come on, guys. Gotta love that. Going for the onion daikon shoyu thing. Cheers. Kimchi. Mm. Mm, very crisp, very fresh. This is more of the younger kimchi. There's two types. If you guys love kimchi, you know what I'm talking about. The older kimchi is when it's fermented a lot longer. A more pungent taste. This is very young, as they call it. Very nice palate cleanser. A little sour, a little spicy, perfectly balanced. I love the shoyu flavor. I love the brightness of the onion, the crunch of the daikon. There's a little bit of a jalapeno in there as well for a little hint of spiciness. Shall we get into the dishes? Yes, I am dying to try this topoki with cheese. And this looks very, very spicy. Dapoki is pretty much like a rice cake dish. Here they have traditionally with fish cake made with spicy gochujang kind of base sauce. Here they put cheese. They also have other options. They have pork option, they have a non-spicy bulgogi option, they have rapoki which is topoki with ramen in it which is my personal favorite but I had to go with something more simple. And I got their LA Kalbi. So a lot of us locals here know Kalbi as this version where it's already marinated and then grilled. In Korea if you say Kalbi or when you order Kalbi it's just the plain short ribs. With so, just like salt and pepper or something, right? Correct. The title LA, to differentiate it from the regular kalbi, it just pretty much means marinated kalbi. So whenever you see LA kalbi on the menu, this is something us locals are used to. Marinated short ribs, finished over the grill. I feel like it's weird that we're starting off with the mains and not the appetizers, but... Yeah, but I, I, mean, I can't wait to get into this. Me either. Ooh, look at that cheesiness. Ooh. Topped with your usual mozzarella cheese. 
Mm. Mm. Oh bro, the LA Kalbi, tender pieces of short rib, perfectly finished over the grill, very soft. The marinade, I will say, is not super sweet, like what us locals are used to. Hint of sweetness, hint of soy, perfectly balanced. This is a must order. The dok or the rice cake is perfectly cooked. Lots of spice in here, but I love that the cheese makes it a little bit less spicy. It kind of cools the heat a bit. And I love the creamy element to it. If you guys like spicy items, definitely get this. It is very flavorful as well. Everything all encompassing is just so delicious. I love the possibilities of this dish. It's endless. Drop a comment down below. Do you eat your kalbi or short ribs clean off the bone? I think that's the only way to eat it. These next two dishes are a crowd favorite. We pretty much always order these two dishes when eating out at Korean restaurants. This is the seafood pancake. I see tons of chives, shrimp, squid, octopus. And I got their pan-fried mandu. And guys, these aren't the ones you're used to seeing at like your local grocery stores, those frozen pot stickers that are always uniform and perfect. No, these are the homemade, handmade, pan-fried style mandu, guys. Very close to my childhood home where I grew up, Omega Mandu House, for you guys that grew up in the Liliha or Pao area. You guys know what I'm talking about. Those Korean aunties, they know what they're doing. Here at Ire, they order it special from Omega Mandu House. So, you know, this is the good stuff. Mmm. Mm. Mm. Oh man, the filling is stuffed full of chives, pork, glass noodle in here. Very authentic, very fresh. Oh my goodness. Just dip it in a little bit of that mandu sauce. I love the seafood pancake because it is packed full of seafood. I love the chive flavor and it's not overly oily. It just tastes very light. And this is a perfect appetizer to share. And it's a very big portion. For me, what makes a perfect mandu is the filling it needs to be stuffed. Check mandu wrapper, crisp. Check. I love that the middle part is still nice and chewy, giving it that extra nice chewy texture. That's what makes a perfect pan fried mandu. This next dish we actually have never tried before. It's very interesting. This whole time when we are thinking of perilla leaves, we are thinking about shiso. So I thought that this was gonna be like a shiso flavor, pan cut noodle dish, but perilla in Korean is actually different. It's more of like a sesame leaf. So this is their pan cut noodles. It's a bit on the thicker side as well. Consistency is almost like a kongji. So the noodles itself are more of like a green color, and I do see some seaweed in here too. And I a think bit of daikon. Onions. Is that daikon? Nick did mention it's a bit on the earthier side. What was this called in Korean? Uh, it's called tulge. Tulge? Yeah. Thank you. For you Korean speakers out there. Ooh. Oh, this is nice. Mm, very good. My first time trying this. Thank you. Very good. It is Ooh. very earthy and nutty. I think the best way to describe it is earthy. I love the texture of the noodle. If we hadn't mentioned already, they grind up the perilla leaves, mix it in with the flour of the noodles, and hand make, hand cut the noodles every day. Noodles are very al dente, very chewy. Honestly, looking at it, I didn't have too much of a high expectation, but it's honestly really delicious. If you like things that are more herby, you like thick, hand-cut noodles that are nice and chewy, heartwarming, like stick to your bones kind of soup, you definitely like this. Although thick, it's not heavy. It's very light in flavor. Yeah, I feel like healthier eating this. Is this healthy? <laughs> it kind of reminds me of the Chinese jiao. Oh no, that's Vietnamese, how you say it. Um, Chinese kongji where it's very light in flavor. If you're just, if you're cold or you're just in the mood for something heartwarming, this is it right here. Another local favorite we want to share with you guys here at Ire, the beloved meat john. And if you guys are new here and aren't sure what meat john is, it is basically thin strips of meat that are coated lightly in egg and then pan fried, dip in a little bit of the sauce. I think their menu said that they use ribeye too. Oh, okay. That's a very nice welcome take on this meat john. Oh, it's so tender. Wow. Oh my gosh. That is so tender. Ooh. Oh my god. I think this might be my favorite meat jam. And I just took one bite. Yeah. Holy cow. The meat itself has a nice flavor. It's so tender. You barely have to even chew it. That's how tender it is. And I love that the egg batter is not super heavy or oil log. It is pounded thinly. That is normal. If you come here, come here for that. That is delicious. Here, you cannot order these on the side like how we did. Nick was gracious enough to made us some to try because 
we didn't want to order an entire another plate. So normally, if you guys come here, it'll be served as a plate with a bed of rice, and they'll give you a lot more meat john than this. Usually two pieces. I'm glad we tried that. Yeah, definite must order the meat john here. <laughs> Probably gonna have to get some takeout boxes because we got more Korean food to show you guys. And this next place we're going to, you guys, it's very interesting. I think you guys will really like it, so stay tuned. It's hard to stop when the food's this good. So we just finished at Ire. Big shout out to Nick and his mom. Super nice people, super awesome concept, family restaurant. We have our next spot right over here. Debu for some Korean style kon sushi. Yee, I'm so excited. First of all, what, what does Debu stand for? Debu you know? is a shortened word for uh, Daewang Yibu, which in Korean, it means uh, giant inari bomb. Oh! Like, very much, yeah, <laughs> yeah, like yeah. It's a Korean yeah. version of, Korean Kon slash sushi. Japanese version of, yeah, Kon sushi. Okay. So we have like Japanese toppings like mentaiko and taku wasabi, Hawaiian style like spicy poke, and salmon, Korean style like uh, bulgogi, fire chicken, kimchi yugu. A uh, lot of flavors, different flavors to choose yeah, from. Yeah, we have 19 right now. Is this a popular Korean street food? Oh, no, not necessarily. There are some restaurants that kind of does this mm -hmm. type of food, but most of these toppings are something that just Jane and my wife Jane and I just came up with. So you won't find these even in Korea then? It's just Yeah, here? Some, some of them you can find because like bulgogi one, I know in Korea they have. Some of these we just came up with on our own. Do you have a favorite? Oh, my personal favorite is the bacon kimchi. Bacon kimchi, yeah. oh, okay. Can't go wrong with that. And we also torch the hot yibus for you guys as well down there. The Ooh. ladies down there will help you guys um, warm it up by okay. torching it. You can also place the order for our gabbro. Combination of kimbap and futomaki. So the way it works is you can choose 8, 10, 6, or 4 yibus. So you grab this, is that okay? And then you grab a unused tongs here and me being really stupid. I didn't know this was open. So you can actually go and grab it yourself. Which one should we get? I don't know, there's a lot to choose from, so. I do want to try this one, mentaiko yubu. Pollock roll mixed with mayo. Supposedly the one here is really good. Ooh, the zesty one looks good. Okay, that's three. There's spam, tuna. This one's Fire calling cheese, my name. chicken, this one, unagi. This one looks pre-torched. And I really, really want to try this one. This crab one looks really good. Maybe corn? This one sounds good. And some of these, you can also have them torch it. They do have ones that they recommend torching, and you can pretty much torch anything, but they torch it on the spot for you too. So now it's time to get these torched up. <laughs> so we just mix this bad boy up and spread it all over. Alright, thank you so much. So what would be like the traditional yubu in Korea? Usually in Korea, they don't put topping on the yubu. Like a fried vegetable with um, rice. They mix the fried vegetable with rice. And there's like a sauce that they use to marinate the rice. Carrot, zucchini, and I cut it like chopped it. And they oh. put inside of the rice and then mix it. I thought this was a franchise or something from Korea. Oh, yeah, no. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, a lot of people ask about that. Yeah. This next place we wanted to feature is called Debu, right next to E-Ray in Azure as well. Very innovative, and we thought it was honestly a type of franchise, but this is the one and only. It is a locally owned and operated business, which is amazing. The couple that owns this restaurant is super, super nice, super charming, and they also have their own like sushi catering business as well. So you know that they have a lot of experience with this, and they even came up with all the toppings, the concept, everything themselves. Themselves. And just look at this. It's so cute. Even their logo is a little cutie. But it's kind of funny because the word debu in Japanese means like fatty or chubby. Oh! First so, one, I'm going in for this mentaiko one. Okay, we're gonna do a yubu bo chop omakase style with our hands. I'm gonna do the crab salad bomb. Mmm. Mm. Oh, yeah. Ooh, I like this. The rice is not a vinegary rice, which I kind of like that it's not. I was just about to say, I love that it's not overly sweet and vinegary, like kon sushi. But I love that this mentaiko is 
a little bit of spicy, a lot of seafoodness, but then the sweetness of the outside, the tofu skin, is very, very nice. I like that the flavor of the mentaiko really shines. Just as how this one, the vinegar rice, isn't the main characteristic of this. I think the rice even is vinegary. Yeah, the, you can really taste the crabbiness in this. I'm sure it's imitation crab, but it is. it's one hell of an imitation. Could have mm. fooled me. Mm. It really tastes like crab. It tastes yeah. like you're eating a crab salad over rice. It does taste like a Cali roll. And they use a lot of like really great ingredients, which I've never really seen it on a kon sushi. Like it's very innovative, very interesting, very different. So highly recommend if you want to try something a little different. Okay, I'm going to try the unagi one because unagi is my favorite. I'm going to try the salmon one. So if you guys don't know by now, unagi is basically freshwater eel. One of my favorite things to get. And here at Debu, they recommend it torched. So mine is nicely torched. I got a salmon one. It looked like it was pre-torched. I didn't ask them to, but it, it came like that. Oh man. Mm. Oh, this is a one. Holy flavor bomb. Is this thing packed full of flavor? It's like taking a bite from a unagi donburi. Nice mm. char from the torch. The buttery fatness of the unagi. So good. Look at the, oh, I saved that. I saved that. You saw it slow-mo that. Nice chunks of unagi. I kabayaki so little. Amanda couldn't even help herself. Mmm. Oh man, I think that's gonna be my favorite one. Mm. Must order. The salmon one, I like it, but there's onions in there. I'm not an onion person. That's my only gripe is the onions. Mm. The salmon one too. All of them are good. Okay, Amanda failed to mention the salmon is raw. It's basically cubes of fresh salmon, mayo, and onion. So it's like your salmon Maui onion, if you guys ever eat that. So next one, I guess I'll try the firecracker cheese chicken. That one sounded very interesting. Also torched for this one. I'm gonna try this garlic shrimp. We met a subscriber named Amanda. She said the garlic shrimp one was good, so I'm gonna try it. Mmm. Mm. Spicy, cheesy chicken concoction. It's like a whirlwind of flavors going on in my mouth. You look at the cross section, you can see all the sauce imploding from the inside. I will say though, I wish this was warm and not cold. Mm. You know, they're all more on the cold side, even though it's torched on the top. I'm gonna do the bacon kimchi. And Ooh. I'm gonna do this corn balm. What is this one called? Corn mayo? Mmm. Mm. Mm. Oh. Well, if you like kimchi and you like bacon, that has some nice bacon-iness. Mm. Creaminess from the mayo, sweetness of the corn, zestiness from the herbs and spices on here. Guys, if you had corn salad from like a Korean fried chicken spot, that kind of corn mayo toss salad, this is it right here, topped on rice. This is really good. It's like Korean corn salsa. Favorites, unagi, corn, and the salmon one. My favorite, mentaiko, unagi, crab, Bacon kimchi. If you guys ever tried Debu, let us know what your favorite flavor is. If you guys haven't, come check them out. Let us know what your new favorite is. But we got a Debu roll as well. This oh, is man, a monster roll, you guys. And they have four different choices of Debu rolls. We got the ahi version because I felt like it would go perfect with the spicy mayo mixture that you can slather on yourself. So this is the spicy mixture. Mayo with shichimi or Japanese seven spice. And I love that they don't mix it for you. That way you mix it yourself. It is kind of windy, but we're gonna try and mix it. Hopefully it doesn't go in my eyes. I'm gonna close my eyes. <laughs> A professional. Okay. So this is the roll. Can you see that big slab of ahi in there? It's their take on the Japanese futo maki. Oh gosh, it's windy. It's windy. It's going. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, that's a lot. Oh gosh, it's a lot. Okay. It's windy. Yeah, eat it. I can't. Look at my hair. You eat it. Uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Mm. Oh, it's going. Oh, mm, it went. Mm. So in here, it looks like there's some daikon. There's a full fried shrimp, egg, avocado, takuan, green onion. Did I say avocado already? There's so much flavors mm. going on. Mm. It's a mm. hefty roll. This will fill you up for lunch and dinner. Wow, very flavorful. I love that every bite you get a different taste. It's a very beautifully presented roll as well. Mm -hmm. It's very pretty. Mm -hmm. I really like this. This is what? a perfect thing to bring to like a potluck. I can imagine a whole platter of these babies. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, whoa, whoa, whoa. All right, Furi Ohana, our next stop here at Yifang just opened up literally right next door to the places we went to. So why not enjoy a nice refreshing iced tea? They're right here. Here at their new location, Yifang. We are at Yifang's new location. We got some drinks. Egg batter pancakes, bubble waffle style batter. And if you guys are longtime subscribers to the channel, Yifang has been one of our favorite drink places, our go-to here on the channel. So. They opened up our new location. Congratulations again to them. So the drink that I got today is their limited seasonal cantaloupe tea. I'm usually not a big cantaloupe fan, but it just looks so refreshing and I love melon. And I got their famous smashed lime series where they, what do you, what do you he call He literally that? smashed it. Yeah, what do you call There's a Mol technique. Yeah, like mosh. He made a mosh out of the lime. Is it mosh? Oh. There you go. You gotta have that nice, satisfying pop, you know, to enjoy your drinks. Cheers. Mm. Mm. Oh yeah, this is the way to go. A very refreshing lime aid with green tea. My choice of beverage here. Be on your way to a refreshing day. Slightly cantaloupey. It's actually not super strong. I'm not a huge cantaloupe fan, but this is very delicious. It has like a hint of sweetness. It can almost pass off as like maybe papaya and mango put together. It doesn't really have like a cantaloupe flavor. The reason I like lime is because it's not as sour as lemon, so it's not as tart as a lemonade, but the refreshing flavor of lemons. Ooh, this is really good. Mm. Whoa, that tastes like a Malona. Yeah. <laughs> but also guys, a reason why we've been coming back to Yifang is because they actually went all the way to Taiwan to train under the actual tea makers. Headquarters, Head Yifang headquarters. Yeah. And they are a locally owned and operated franchisee here in Hawaii. And now we're gonna try their waffles. This is their cocoa flavor Nutella filled pancake. As you can see, it's super cocoa. You can see even on the inside, it's so nice and chocolatey, Nutella. Is it Nutella or Nutella? Um, Let us know how you pronounce it. Mm. Not too sweet, Whoa. I like it. You can see the inside is so nice and pillowy and bouncy. It's like a hazelnut filled brownie. But it's also light, lighter than a brownie between like a brownie slash, mo slash mochi. But this will go great with the other drink that I got. This is their strawberry tea latte. So previously we tried their strawberry latte, which is a strawberry and milk, like a milkshake. But this one incorporates some tea in there as well. So it's gonna be a little lighter, refreshing and caffeinated. <laughs> oh, and also I forgot to mention, but the cantaloupe drink. It's seasonal. It's seasonal. So when you guys come, they might not have it because cantaloupe season is gonna be over. Okay, strawberry tea latte. Ooh. I can never get a satisfying like poke. Yeah. Maybe you should let me do the poking. And try it out. Mmm. It's like a strawberry milkshake, but not as heavy. A little bit lighter. And this one, I got 50% sweet, 5-0. And it's a, still a little bit sweet for my taste, but you can definitely get it a little less sweet or you can get it normal sweet as well. It's almost like a strawberry smoothie, but more of a icy smoothie. It's not as milky and heavy like a ice cream, strawberry ice cream type of smoothie, uh, milkshake. Here at Yifang, I feel like the fruit flavor comes first. You can really taste the tea. The tea is smooth, it's not bitter. And I think we forgot to mention too here at Azor for this complex, there is parking off of Keomoku. It's right by the lobby for the Azor condominium. You don't need any validation or anything, or you don't have to pay for parking as long as you stay within the complex and you actually visit the vendors here, but don't try to go to Walmart by parking there. They're gonna tow your car. Just fair warning. Right, Furi Hana, that about wraps up today's Korean food tour here on Kea Moku, located in Azur once again. We hope you guys had an amazing time because we sure did. And guys, as always, we always try to promote supporting local. All of these businesses that we supported today are local businesses. So definitely give them some support. That way we can help out our community. Big mahalo to Nick at E-Ray, David and Jane at Debu. And of course, our friends from Yifang, always a great time. And Tony for setting the whole thing up. Yes. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. We hope you really enjoyed today's content. If you did, give it a big thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button. Oh, does that leave? <laughs> Hit that subscribe button. In your mouth? <laughs> a leaf went in her mouth. Like she was a squirrel. 
stuff. Hit that subscribe button down below. It'll help us a lot. <laughs> I can't. And hit that subscribe button down below to come and join our foodie ohana. And we will see you guys on our next video. All right, foodie ohana. Until the next one, let's hope it's not as windy. Enjoy your Korean eats. Explore your eating foodie. Peace out. Bye, guys. A sip of booty chow. No, it's body. So let's start off the day right with. So let's start off the. <coughs> I say that. <coughs> the reason for that being. And the reason for that. And I was very, very. And I was very. They use. Is because they. What is Yubu boat? It's super windy today, guys. I'm going for it. Oh, can I just dig into it? Is yes, that okay? just dig into it. <laughs> oh, it's hot. It's hot. Never mind. Can't hold it. Oh, that thing is gone, man. Oh, can't, it's like can't. a whirlwind. Oh, it's actually <laughs> back here. Oh. oh, Amanda's still fetching it. She got it. She got it. Perfect to go. Perfect to. I'll watch you guys on YouTube. Oh, oh thank you. you. Oh. These are the, these are the homemade pa pancakes. What yes, Chinese style. For the record, oh. I want it to be there, covered. But anyway, it is basically. Whoa! Excuse me. <laughs> Whoa! The buttery, battery, battery. That's a, that's a nice uh, upgrade. Nice take. -up. Milk. Cantaloupe tea. Cantaloupe tea? <laughs> the garlic shrimp, maybe. It's not gonna be like the norm, the, uh, not normal, but. Oh my God, look at me. Look at my hair. There was music playing on the inside, so we couldn't sit in there. And they're very, very busy, so we didn't want to bother them. We got so many, oh, what the heck? I spit on accident when I was speaking and it went back in my face. <laughs> I guess this works out because you tend to spit, so now I, I'm safe. Um, what was I saying? It's innovative, we don't really see this, oh. yada yada. Okay, next one.